Efficient and the merciful, we give praise and thanks to God for bringing us together so that we may experience His Word. So I greet you, my believing and my unbelieving brothers and sisters, with the greetings of peace. To my Christian brothers and sisters, peace be unto you. To my Hindu brothers and sisters, Namaste. To my Rastafarian brothers and sisters, Ja peace and Ja love. And to my Muslim brothers and sisters and all other denominations, I greet you with the greetings of peace in the Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum. To my Muslim brothers and sisters, especially as this is the beginning of Ramadan, I greet you with the greetings of Ramadan Mubarak. And hope that this Ramadan would be one that is specially designed apart from all the other Ramadans that we know. Mecca is closed for over thousands of years, it's the first time that Mecca is closed. Very conspicuous, everything that's happening around us. Who closed Mecca? Did Allah close Mecca? Did Allah say that nobody must go to Hajj? Did Allah say that? Who said it? Did Allah prevent his worshippers from gathering together in Hajj. And so those of us who are here, we are confined to our homes, so we will have to visit Hajj at home. So many of us who feel to themselves that it is so important to make the pilgrimage, we realize that a pilgrimage can be made at home. Because that's what many believing men and women are forced to undertake at this particular point and time. You know, when, when we see the, the, the things surrounding and developing around us, for those of us who are believers and who have faith, cannot cease to wonder at how things that we think are so important that automatically we can do without them. They are not as important as we think that they are. Hajj is not as important as our families right now. But if that wasn't the case, many of us would have gone to Hajj, even if we could hardly afford it.
what we are seeing and we are experiencing things that are beneficial for our lives. And even though people are disintegrating in our world today due to this bad fella that they call COVID-19, this big one that is able to shut down churches, shut down mosques, have families being restricted to their homes, have people being arrested after their a certain time of the night, COVID, very big guy, huh? Very, very big guy. But who makes him big? Who are the ones that glorify him? Because he's being glorified. Man, you turn on the TV, you hear about COVID. You turn on the radio, you hear about If you were hearing so much about Allah or about your gods that you believe in, it, it, you know, but everywhere COVID is there doing his thing and believing that he has everybody under control. That's only his belief. And he can continue to believe that. But there are those among us who knows him, who knows who he is, who knows where he came from, and who knows his intentions and his thoughts and his evil plans. There are those among us who know that. And he's going to have a very difficult time with those of us who have recognized him You know, we have the art of recognition. The virus that is in the lives of the people. The virus that continues to try and destroy the hope and the faith that we have in God. But we know him, and we know what he is up to. We have seen his works. We have seen his deeds. We have seen his conduct. And we know him. See, because he looks like us. He talks like us. He behaves like all of us. but he doesn't belong to us. And so he is on the path of destruction. But you know, there is no other way that COVID can get go by destroying himself. And he is about to do that. Now we see, for example, we hear the amount of things that are happening during this time. We have been having complaints from people who have no idea, and I know it's going to be said it was on the media, but not everybody has access to media. And there are those who only look at pictures and can't read and write and many things they don't know. But they are being molested by GTNT. Burdens again. We have the burden of the political crisis. We have the burden of 
the plague that they call the virus, and now a few other burdens. We have had complaints that GTT is calling up and threatening to disconnect the phone. We've heard GPL, we've had complaints that GPL is disconnecting lights under these circumstances. The only one that has been a bit lenient up to now is Gaiwa, the guy in the water third. But everybody else has made promises that they cannot keep. But again, it's a situation that's facing us as another burden. The burden of our children not being able to go to school is another burden. You know, the prophet Jesus said, he says, woe unto you scribes and Pharisees. You garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. He says, you place heavy burdens on the shoulders of people to bear, and you don't bear them with one finger. He says, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Your endings will be worse than your beginnings. You see, it shows you that these things have been going on for ages, or else Christ would have no need to utter such statements. This is not a new thing. The only difference is that the religious leaders, those who are supposed to be following in the footsteps of the prophets, have taken a back seat. And so they are not out front there fighting the battle for the less fortunate. And in crises like these, the less fortunate are always the ones to suffer most, most. I mean, there are a lot of people suffering that are not badly off, but most of the people are the less fortunate, the less fortunate among the elderly, those who haven't got their own families to look after them. And so we continue to live in fear, in fear of COVID, the big, heavy man on the scene, Mr. COVID. And COVID is directing the program, how we should live, where we should go, where we should gather, where we should not gather. Mr. COVID is in charge. He thinks. He thinks. One of the spiritual aspects of this is that when Mr. COVID came on the scene in our country now, it was during the time of Lent. It was the time of fasting. As he continued, it was during the time of Naurat, which is the Hindu's fasting time. And he's still around during the time of Ramadan, but he will leave. He will leave by the end of Ramadan. You see, Brothers and sisters, it is so that every time we fast, we have a way of dealing with our own section of faith. And it is a secular thing because everybody does their own thing. But fasting has been prescribed for all 
our main religions in this country. And any Muslim would meet you and tell you fasting is prescribed by Allah so that we may learn restraint. Restraint from what? Food? From drink? From sex? What, what, what is the restraint? It is very important for, for us to understand that he says that we may learn self-restraint. That word self has a lot to do with selfish so that we will learn and restrain ourselves from being selfish. Not restrain, restrain ourselves from food, you know. That's something we can restrain ourselves from, most of us, at any time. But we have a difficulty in restraining ourselves from being selfish, self-restraint, selfishness. And it continues to be in our denominations, in our religions, even there we are selfish. We criticize each other's religion. We find faults with each, with each other's idols and whatever it might be they have. We find fault because you know why? We are selfish. Selfish people. So I hope for this Ramadan that we will understand that we need to restrain ourselves and we need to have self-restraint from our selfish ways, our selfish thoughts. Because our selfish thoughts knows about our evil plans because that's what we have to use to carry out the evil that we visualize like the evil that is being that mr covid has brought see mr whole covid has come with a whole bunch of evil showing off himself showing off himself and laughing because he has everyone, most people, behaving as he would like them to behave. But there are some who are refraining from fulfilling Mr. COVID's desires and expectations. I always tell you, brothers and sisters, do what they tell you to do, but don't do as they do. For they place heavy burdens. It's a lot of burdens. A lot of burdens that we are facing at this point in time. And I would like to ask my brothers and sisters who have already fasted, Lent and Naurat to join with us and even if it's one day of this month of Ramadan give us a day for it's the nation that has to fast and pray this is not a Muslim thing anymore just like it wasn't a, a Christian thing with Lent, because that's when it started. People started dying all over the world. Christians. And then Naurat. So let us fast together. Even if it's one day you as a Christian or you as a Hindu fast during this month of Ramadan with us. It's an invitation for you to fast with us so that we will be able to deal with Mr. COVID in the way that he needs to be dealt with.
because he is showing off himself. And you don't, like our brothers and sisters, so you don't big up yourself in front of Allah. So you're invited, brothers and sisters, as my Christian and Hindu brothers and sisters, to give every week, one day, to fast and pray with us. You pray at home, but you are keeping the fast with the Muslims now. Because we had Lent, we had now Rat and Mr. O, Mr. COVID is still around. He has to go now. He has to go in the month of Ramadan. He has to go. And you know about fasting. So let us fast together. Let us fast together. And let us see how powerful Mr. COVID is. I guarantee you, brothers and sisters, if we fast together, he's gone by the end of Ramadan. Looking for him and can't find where he is. But he knows his place and he must be put to his place. Man create his own monster. Weapons of damnation and disaster. No sign at all of human rights The day has turned into night Is racialism so And segregation so Which way is left to go I don't know Hold on Tell me What about Love thy neighbor Tell me What about He ain't heavy We are still in a political crisis um, and there are those of us among us who are still anxiously awaiting the recount. I call it the ridiculous recount. And there are those of us who are not specifically interested in what the recount brings. For the simple reason, brothers and sisters, we continue to look at people who have been elected to serve us, to serve us, and we see their behavior. We observe their attitudes and their characteristics. And we wonder to ourselves, what would the recount prove? What would it really prove? If God is not acknowledged, then good could never come out of the situation that is facing us. Those 65 people whom we as a nation have given the privilege of sitting in parliament to make decisions for us. But what we are experiencing is that the decisions are being made for they themselves. 
if the decisions should be have made for us, then they would not have to quarrel because they would not be seeing themselves. They would be seeing us. You see, but because they see themselves, there is no us. They are only themselves and they. Where do we look, brothers and sisters? Our Muslim brothers and sisters, we look to Allah. Our Christian brothers and sisters, we look to Jehovah, Jesus. Our Hindu brothers and sisters, they look to Lord Krishna, Lord Shiva, Hanuman, or the Ganga, Lachmi. It's the only source that we have in a situation like this. And we will see. That's why I have asked for you who are Christian and you who are Hindu to give us one day out of your week and fast with us. You didn't ask us to do that. You had your Lent and you didn't ask us to fast with you. You had your Naurat and you didn't ask us to fast with you. You did your own fasting thing, everybody. But now I'm asking you on behalf of our mosque and on behalf of Islam, I'm asking you to fast with us one day in the week. For it is not yet clear to a lot of countries that if the poor and the needy and the less fortunate are not looked after, we will have more viruses than we can imagine. You know, the very less fortunate and poor people right now are not dying like the others because they are protected. They, there is a living God. They are protected. You, you check out the statistics and see how many really poor people, depraved people are dying. Mr. COVID has no authority over them. But we leave them to die. We leave them to punish. At this point in time, it is important that we go on the streets and we start picking up all the people who are sleeping on the streets, all the people who are hungry. At this time, the little money we have, we should invest it in buildings or we should take over buildings so that they would have somewhere to live, something to eat, and there's enough work for those of them who want to work. They don't have to beg. We need to take the beggars off the street. We need to stop having people begging on the street. It's a shame. It's a disgraceful thing when you have your people begging on the street. Those are things that need to be done in order to get rid of Mr. COVID. You see, we're looking for all kinds of vaccinations. We're depending upon vaccinations that have been promised to us. They're going to send, we're going to send vaccinations. We're going to make a We don't need vaccinations. We need to look after the less fortunate in our society. We need to look after the poor and the needy. And if it was a case whereby those who represent us were thinking like that, then there would not be a recount. There would have to be no need to be a recount. But their thoughts are elsewhere. They are so concerned 
with themselves. That they are not able to understand fully that it's a simple process. Start looking after your poor people. Start looking after the elderly. Start making homes for them to go and live. Start finding work for the beggars. We have islands in the Essequibo. We can always take an island and build a place for people who are mentally ill than have them running around in Burbies on the streets. Those are the things that weaken our immune system. Brothers and sisters, you know, it is very technical in trying to understand what God wants. But God deals with simplicity. And it is sometimes so simple that we don't even realize that it's there. But let anyone try it. Let any government try it at this time that has the co Mr. COVID being in charge. Start looking after your poor. Start looking after your needy. Start looking after your elderly. Start looking after your disabled. Start looking after the lame. Put money in those people's welfare and you will see that Mr. COVID will disappear. Believe it or leave it. Brothers and sisters, I want to thank you for listening to me and hope that you will understand very clearly that practical experience is the greatest teacher. Memory is the greatest truth. And ungratefulness is the greatest sin. And when you're ungrateful to our people, and you're ungrateful to anyone, then COVID will always have a chance of conquering and fulfilling his evil desires. May Allah bless you and keep you and guide you. And again to my Muslim brothers and sisters, fasting is prescribed for you to learn self-restraint, restraint from selfishness. As-salam alaykum. The truth is the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Practical experience is the greatest teacher. Memory is the greatest truth. And ungratefulness is the greatest sin. Breaking down is a whole big run around. A lot of talk is what goes on. While the world Taking to where comes out of control, the atmosphere is cold. Oh, 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 oh. Hold on, hold on. Tell me, what about the love thy neighbor? Tell me, what about he and Terry? He's my brother. Nobody cares at that. Master, they throw away. 